Hello there, I'm Mikko from the Body of Christ and welcome to another Leadership Reflection. Today our topic is honesty, which is a very important subject. And before we dive deeper into that topic, I would just like to ask you, do you think, do you think of yourself as an honest person? Do you think you're honest? Uh, what do you think honesty means? What do you think it doesn't mean? I'd like to hear your thoughts and also keep those thoughts or questions in your mind as we go, go further to see whether what I explain matches what you think or not and wondering why that might be or might not be. Anyway, um, I would like to start with a story of, of some sort. Um, it comes to my mind this sentence from Paul, and I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but what he's saying is something on the lines of, um, I need to be cautious so that I, if I let others to Christ, won't be kind of rejected myself. And that thought came to me based on this, this kind of simple question is, can you build the kingdom of God on deception or dishonesty? And if we think of, make that in the story form to kind of visualize it or think about it further, uh, let's say we have a pastor. This pastor's name is, name is Peter. Uh, not the same Peter, but, you know, he's a pastor. And Peter is a very holy man especially externally. And everyone in his congregation thinks highly of him. And what's Peter's greatest characteristic is his charisma and ability to inspire faith in others. So his team is very inspired because of what he says. And he speaks about the kingdom of God and he leads the efforts to build the kingdom of God. Unfortunately, one day Peter dies and it's in his bed and now he's dead. Or maybe he falls dead and he gets a second chance. Let's see. But his spirit leaves him and goes to heaven or goes to meet the Lord Jesus. And as he goes and meets Jesus, Jesus meets him on the way. Uh, and it's like, why do you think, why do you think I should let you in, into heaven? What do you think of these things? And he says, of course, well, I did all these great works. And I led so many people to Christ. And I had this big church building here. And I lived quite a moral life, you know. So I think that's good. But Jesus is just like, where's your heart? Where's your faith? You know, you led others to faith, but, but did you see what, what you have done here? Things that you have hidden behind your back. Things that never came to light. That porn addiction of yours or that money laundering scheme you had over there, that affair you had. You never came to light with these things. And all these things that you built, what do you think they're based on? Maybe a little work of rebuke from Jesus, but maybe that's a stupid story. I don't know. But oftentimes our external works can seem righteous and many people can look up to us. But if it's like, a, let's say it's like a building made like this or something like that, I guess. But these, these lower bricks here, they are fragile and weak. And they are not well constructed. And as, as this building gets built further and further, we're running out of space here, but you can imagine it. Um, you know, external efforts and achievements increase, there's more and more pressure on these lower bricks here. And one day 
ka-ching, they crumble. And all your great ministry work or business work or whatever may come to destruction because you didn't build the foundational things first. And honesty and walking the light is one of those things. If you get very far in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, without building honesty, things can go on crashing down. And she's kind of referred to something like that when he said a oh, parable about the person who built on the rock and then the person built on the sand. Both built probably nice buildings, but the other one had a strong foundation, which was hearing what Jesus had to say and doing what he had to say. So following in practice. The other didn't have either the hearing or the works, but maybe he had the words, was speaking about the kingdom of God, but was his heart built on the kingdom of God? Or was she just bluffing? And the faith of these people might be sincere, but that doesn't necessarily help our Peter here if he he has not things right. Anyway, this is not a theological training or whatever. I don't know what happens if you have that sort of trouble, but I know it's an interesting question to ask. Can you build the kingdom of God on deception or dishonesty? So that's kind of why I started this. And um, I would claim that honesty is a very important thing to culti cultivate in your team culture. So let's say you have a team here and you're the leader here. And like we discussed in an earlier teaching about macro and micro, for example, and many other cases, your role is to operate in the macro level. That means you don't have direct access to micro information necessarily. You are not up to connect it all to all that data because otherwise you'll be overwhelmed. So what happens is your team brings you wisdom, information, and direction in, in terms of uh, correction, for example, or maybe gives you a sense if something's not right, if it's a good team. And like we discussed last time about this speaking truth in love, um, there may be a tendency in your team, if it's a worldly team or anywhere in you in this, that they want to tell you what you want to hear instead of what you need to hear. So they will self censor the Holy Spirit and themselves and only tell you what you want to hear, like that, those prophets in the, in the earlier story. And what that can lead into is destruction really because if you needed to know that information that hey there's a <laughs> destruction coming your way and and they say just peace peace go on that can have horrendous consequences similarly if you provide a deceptive image let's say this is your image you don't you place it before between you and them you don't let them inside your you're not real, basically, then they receive kind of false expectations, false, they make false assumptions based on your image, and the results probably are not as optimal. It all comes back to you. But that's just from an operational standpoint, not to even consider the moral standpoint, as we discussed earlier. Um... But let's, again, uh, switch the approach a little, approach this from a different angle, and let's ask ourselves, what is honesty? So, what do you think it is? And also, one interesting question, I think, is, what's the opposite of honesty? Is it deceitfulness? Is it wickedness, unrighteousness, lying? What is it? Um, for the purposes of this training, 
I think this uh, definition might be useful. Uh, it's not the final definition for sure, for, for certain, but I think honesty is kind of being real and like presenting yourself as you are, not provide, not kind of providing or causing a false impression on other people, at least not on purpose. So being who you are basically, and really open with that. And what does that cause? Well, obviously, because we all have some trouble in our lives, say things we would like to present over here, the achievements, the strengths, the, you know, virtues, but here we have our downfalls, mistakes, stupid ones, um, maybe even character flaws and our imperfections, all sorts of bad stuff. And of course, same. And if we not do not bring this into light, if we keep it to ourselves, ourselves, then we're not being honest. We're being partial, partially present in the moment. But why would we want to keep those things in the dark? Well, if nobody sees it, nobody can reject us because of that. And this, for me, that's a biggie. So when you open those things up, some people might come and say, see those things and say, you suck. You're not worthy of being in the kingdom of God, or you're not worthy to be my leader. You're a worthless criminal bastard, whatever. <laughs> and they might reject you. Be like, this, this guy's a loser. And of course that doesn't feel nice. And kind of based on this idea, I would propose that the opposite of honesty is a fear or timidity. Because that's, in my perspective, might be the biggest motivation for presenting a false image of ourselves or simply not being real, not fully, being fully present in, in the team, in the conversation, in everything. But this has a lot to do with your relationship with God. Um, namely, I think because God, he sees everything you are and everything within you. Nothing is hidden from God. So when you're being deceptive, you're being deceptive to yourself and your team, but you cannot be deceptive towards God. And that's really the self-deception in this honesty, is that you cannot get away with anything. And as, as, as much as we would like to, maybe. But if you apply the principle of fear of God or the attribute of fear of God, then you are aware of this fact that God sees and you respect him and you have a strong relationship with him. So regardless of what other people think or regardless whether you can get away with it with other people or whatever, regarding the consequences, um, you still want to walk in the light because, uh, because you want to be real with God. And while some may think that, well, yeah, I confess things to God. Um, I hope that's enough. But sometimes that also requires us to be present with other people, you know? being realist, if they have offended you or you have offended them, you know, making amends, asking for forgiveness, giving forgiveness, whatever, and, uh, you know, being real for them for the sake of, uh, loving your neighbor, basically. So it's not independent of other people. And I would say really, this is why it's important to have a strong identity in Christ and a strong sense of the love of God. Because, um, because without that, you don't really have the resources to be honest. So let's say you're here 
And here is the pressure of the truth, so to speak. The pressure of dealing with all the mistakes that you have made, dealing with every imperfection that is part of you. Uh, if your value is based on any of those false things, basically, like, for example, on, on the fact or not a fact that people look up to you, that you are esteemed as a great leader, or that your efforts, for example, that you're building the kingdom of God, or you have a mighty church, or you have a nice business, or something external. But when those things are being kind of attacked over here by this, this would be truth, I guess. Um, the te tendency is to redirect the issue like, well, you're just as bad as I am. Why, why are you looking at me? Or maybe like trying to defend yourself or trying to evade things, trying to hide. And you need to defend yourself because everything you are is on the line of being destroyed. But if you have here like a strong foundation, like whatever happens, even if you lose everything, and even if everyone hates you, including your wife and your dog, um, you would still know that God loves you. And that would give you a sense of fulfillment, a sense of security, trust, sense of value of yourself. Then from that perspective, and I think from that perspective only, can you be honest with others and be real and be like, yeah, this is who I am. And you're afraid to reject me because of that. And I'm working on those things, but it's not an excuse. Like, this what I did. It, it's really wrong. And this tendency is really wrong. And, and like, this this what I do is sin. And I, I hate that. And I repent of that. I don't want to do that anymore. But it, it's hard to repent of things that don't come to light in the first place. Because if, if you're defending them, if your value, like, there's not enough flexibility, let's say, to deal with that properly without this strong foundation. But if you have strong foundation, whenever somebody points out something wrong in you, you can simply say, yeah, that's wrong. I don't want that to be a part of my life. But I have to deal with it right now, but uh, like, I'm repenting, okay? So kind of challenging people on honesty and challenging people on honest culture may have to go with the pace of their relationship with God, their sense of identity, also maybe their relationship with you. It doesn't happen overnight and not necessarily are all the people honest with you, even though they might be honest with someone else. But anyway, um, but Concerning leadership, I think this is uh, a value we want to promote. So, like, how how should we deal with honesty in our team culture, for example, dishonesty? Well, I would say it starts with you removing your this mirror or whatever image here, and you being real, regardless of whether the other people are or not. But you being like hey, I messed up here. I'm sorry, I, I treated you badly. And yeah, actually, this is a gift that God gave me. I'm honest about good things too. And I give glory to God about them. Um, but you being like real, you be providing example. And like who's, who's the leader that puts others to go first and doesn't show them the way? And that doesn't make too much sense. Uh, I mean, that's not worthy leadership. But you present the idea first. And I'm, I guess suggest that you also present a strong expectation from others to do the same. And, and explain maybe the consequences of dishonesty. And maybe make it a real standard in your team like, this is what we are about. Like, for example, about the building of kingdom of God and what I asked you in the beginning. Like, can it build 
be built on deception. But for example, if you're into that sort of business, you can ask, uh, like, hey guys, are we here to build the kingdom of God or are we here to build our own kingdoms? If they're like, yeah, we're building the kingdom of God, then addressing this issue, like, well, then can we agree on the fact that we need to be completely honest and transparent with each other on everything, on good things, on bad things, on hardships, disagreements, uh, on our weaknesses and sin and failures. Can we, can we commit to that on being real with each other? Because if we are not real, why are we even building this thing? Because like if the foundation is not strong, like I said earlier, what's the point of building further? Because it's just going to collapse or we're not going to reap the fruits of it. And we're just deceiving ourselves really, trying to play God games when we don't have us, like we're not good with God, basically. Because we're keeping secrets from him, from each other. That's, we cannot get anywhere with that and we, should, we, we could just give up. We, we can just ignore or forget about our vision and go home if, if that's the case. So do you understand that this is like critical? There's no point in working anything if we don't have this. And actually, I would say that it's so important that if you, if at some point you would come to the conclusion that you, you would rather be dishonest than, than be honest and build the kingdom of God, then I would appreciate you to tell it and to leave this group so that you don't waste your time and you don't waste I, our time either. You know, addressing that really and starting to build the foundation like earlier. Because if we don't build the foundation, we can achieve all sorts of things, but it's just no, I don't come trembling down and get destroyed, like Jesus said. So starting starting with the basics. And how about you? Do you still think you're honest? <laughs> Not asking that, uh, uh, like trying to cause any doubt or anything or like challenge you. It's more like kind of funny because like I personally find this to be, I mean, it's probably the most, if like one of the most um, challenging things to do, like being real because that requires us to operate in what Sean said, that in love there is no fear. And who's going to become perfect in love doesn't fear. And that's really like, once we get from fear, then we can be fully honest and fully transparent. But as long as there is fear, it's like, wow, it's pretty challenging. And I can tell you, I'm not, I'm not yet there. Not yet there. I've been hiding too many things. I'm not being like, you can be dishonest just by being quiet, you know, or not saying anything. You know, somebody says something like, I don't know, somebody gossips around you, uh, speaks evil of, of some other person, and, you know, the Holy Spirit is craved inside of you. And like, that's wrong. And like, but you just endure it and don't say anything. That's dishonesty. That's not being real. Even that, think about that. Even such a small thing, many may think acceptable. Not like your team has a meeting and let's say this guy presents an idea here and everyone's excited about it, but you're quiet. You're just waiting there for them to approve the idea. You know, it's not going to work because of this mistake, but that would hurt their feelings. So you're not going to say anything. Is that honesty? No, that's dishonesty. Again, like last, last time we spoke about love and truth, that's that you're being silent there may cause the other person to stumble and to fail. And you're, you're presenting a false witness because you're kind of playing that you agree, but you don't agree in your heart. You're not being real there. So honesty goes just a lot deeper than just not 
lying or providing obvious lies. Also, like, not being silent about things. Not being silent even about the evil in this world. Not being indifferent. Not just burying all your feelings somewhere. And trying to play that you don't exist. That kind of honesty. And that, that's, for me, the challenging part, especially. So, just something to think about, right? Whether you're honest, what should we do about it? But in terms of what we should do about it, here's my suggestion. Get yourself a team or become a team member where the leader has this revelation or you have this revelation of honesty and start practicing it with, within that sort of safe environment. Like work together to build that safe environment, safe culture. Like, and if that doesn't say too much to you, well, probably does. But it, either way, I recommend checking out teaching about safe harbor um, that deals with that matter specifically. Uh, but together, you can build such an environment that being honest is more easy. And maybe if you can even work in the love of God, maybe you can work work out that inner core of yours and that strength in, in God and his love, knowing that he left the 99 sheep just to come and rescue you from your misery, from things that you caused to yourself. Like, and he always is open to receive you back. Like in the parable of the prodigal son, like he doesn't, like Jesus said, I didn't come to uh, call the righteous, but I came to call the sinners to repentance. And also uh, the well done need a healer, but the sick do it. And I came to heal the sick. So he doesn't, he doesn't, I guess, condemn you because of your failures. Like I say, here are all your mistakes, like with the prodigal son, like, like pig, pig poo right on his, his shirt and face and whatever. And like obvious, like immediate, you, you are, you smell, you're acting bad, you're poor, you, you approached yourself, you know, whatever. Well, obviously there, present. But did the father look into that and be like, oh, I mean, get a shower and come back. If try to, like, shape up why you're coming here like that. You know, that's the response we get. Really from people who cannot deal with their own imperfections but father was quite different he didn't look at any of that he, he was just super happy about his son coming back to him so kind of <laughs> getting emotional again but you know we can do that we can build team teams and start building this sort of organization culture where we can actually multiply this, multiply this safe environment, multiply the culture of honesty. Think about that, what that can do in, in I don't know, in your nation, in your city, where people start operating in this, in your church. Either. I think that holds potential. Either way, uh, it would be very interesting to hear your thoughts here. Whether you think you're honest, whether you thought you're honest, and like what kind of areas of improvement you think you might need. And again, this may be better shared in a safe environment with your team rather than in some YouTube comments or something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, call the Holy Spirit. Thank you for showing. It was fun talking with you. And I hope to see you in the next leadership reflection.